All right, we are in geometry. Andres just won the arm wrestling challenge. Today's date is Thursday, March 5th, 2020. We're talking about inscribed angles today. So what is an ins... Oh, hold on, too fast. Uh, is there a question already? Yes, yeah, would you? Say that one more time, louder. The 18 armor, so what if she finds out that we arm wrestling? That's fine. Do you go arm wrestling? That's, nothing bad happens, I don't think. <laughs> um, let's give it to um, the loser of the arm wrestling challenge. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the punishment for losing. <laughs> you must read the objective. Yeah, it's a pretty generic one. Okay, so what does it mean to be an inscribed angles? It's when those angles are attached to the edge of the circle, a.k.a. the circumference of the circle. So I'm going to type that in because I like typing more than writing. It makes it look nice and neat. So an inscribed angle is when the angle is attached to the circumference. I cannot spell circumference, apparently. And if you don't like thinking of it as edge or as circumference, you can think of it as edge. It does not matter. So let's draw a picture of an inscribed angle. It's like baby's first words. It's baby's first inscribed angle. Here we go. So draw a point anywhere on the circumference, on the edge of your circle. I'm going to do one right there. You can draw one anywhere that you want. And then draw two other points that are going to be the edge of your angle. So my angle is going to look like that. I'm going to make mine nice and neat and tidy, though, because I have technology. So my inscribed angle looks like that. Notice that it is an angle that is attached to the circumference. Notice also that it's very similar to a central angle. Again, a central angle, by definition, is one that comes from the center. Just like a central angle, I still have points on the edge of the circle on the circumference of the circle over here, just like before. So it's the same thing that we were talking about before with a central angle, except I've now stretched it. So here's our old central angle, and I've kind of stretched out, so I've moved this point out here to the edge and touching the circumference. There is baby's first inscribed angle. All right, so let's talk about the theorem that comes along with this. It's a package deal. So. I have a bunch of different diagrams here. I can drag this point S anywhere on the circle as long as it's away, from, not in between A and B. So anywhere around here, I can drag this S. It doesn't matter. I can drag it here. I can drag it over there. I can drag it over there. It's not going to change its angle. It's always the same angle as long as A and B don't move. If A and B don't move, this angle, it does not matter where it goes. It's still theta over 2, theta over 2, theta over 2, assuming that that is theta. It's kind of this really cool property. You think, shouldn't it change? Shouldn't it maybe get smaller or bigger? And it does if you move in here, but all the way out here is fair game. But it has some really cool consequences and implications that we'll talk about later. But first, let's write down our formula. So if we assume, again, in this formula, I am assuming here that the central angle is theta. I could have called that central angle 3 theta. I could have called it 10 theta. I think theta is the easiest thing I can do. So assuming that we have central angle is equal to theta, so I can say central angle is equal to theta, how much of that theta am I to get the inscribed angle? This inscribed angle is how much of theta? And you can just write down what you see. Quiet raise hand. Write down that red angle that you see up there as a fraction, I guess. Is it a third? Is it times four? How much bigger or smaller? Mm, no one? I thought that was kind of an easy question. What fraction do you see right there if you ignore the theta? Julian? Two, kind of. Two is the denominator. Two is the denominator. The numerator is... Oh, bro. One oh, half. Yeah, that's what I said. I said half. Yeah, you said half. No, you got it. I don't know if people are giving you... I think there's other people that were making me think that. You have one half. So it's one half of the central angle. Everyone write it down. So as long as you can find your central angle, just take half of that. And you can even see it. Like, that's a big angle. That's a small angle. It gets smaller by a factor of a half. But 
what if, what if I start at the smaller angle? What if I call that theta? How much bigger do I get? So I'm going to write down a new formula to help you out for the second example. What if I have the inscribed angle? So over here I'm going to say inscribed angle. What times the inscribed angle is equal to my central angle? Again, I'm assuming now, I'm given the inscribed angle. I'm given this red angle. What do I have to multiply by in order to get to that central angle? What number do I multiply by? Andres, I'll take your card. Your card. Julian, don't give him your card anymore. You sold it. All right, so you would have to multiply by one half? Not exactly, because if I multiply by a half, this will get even smaller. It'll be a tiny little sliver like that to get from here to here, a half of that. Oh, you're getting from, from the blue to the red. So I'm trying to get from the red to the blue. How much do I have to multiply the red to the blue? Um, 0.5. 0.5 will make this even smaller. This angle right here is definitely not the dry end angle right there. Times two. Times two, there it is. How about two over one? Two over one, sure, the reciprocal. So two times oh, the, the inscribed angle. So you just take the reciprocal of that, and then that would be the angle that is newly formed. <laughs> yep. All right. So let's try talking about the implications here. Implications. So if we have two inscribed angles, look, there's one it's touching the circumference. There's another touching the circumference. So if I have two inscribed angles, I'm just kind of reading here. And they are attached to the same endpoints. Oh, yeah. So A and B are the endpoints. That one is attached to A and B. This blue uh, dotted line is attached to A and B. And this red dashed line is also attached to A and B. Then these inscribed angles, what do we know about them? The quiet raised hand. So two people don't have any cards, though. No. Don't let them have it. Good. <laughs> What do we know about this? And if you think about what I just said before, I can drag this point anywhere I want on this circle. There's a special word that means what's happening here. So say, congruent. Yeah, congruent. Those two angles are congruent. Everyone write it down. Those two angles are congruent. So in our diagram, if this angle right here is x, this angle is also x. And I'll put x degrees. It's going to be a very, very helpful property. And we'll see that probably in tomorrow's lesson. I don't know when it comes up next. It's been a while since I've done this unit. All right, so let's try doing example number one. I'm telling you that our blue angle, angle A, B, C is 112 degrees. Let's label it. That blue angle there, label that as 112 degrees. 112 degrees. I want to figure out what is the angle of this red angle. This angle C, D, A, or I guess I'm just calling it A, D, C. How much is that? Well, it looks smaller. Do I multiply by two? Do I multiply by half? How do I make it smaller? It's only one of those two options, right? No. So the car is in, Sergio? Multiply by half. And can you do that for us? So we say 112 times one half You got this, I believe in you. Do 100 first. I do half of 100 and then you can do half of 12. It is indeed 56. Everyone write it down. This is 56 degrees. All right, let's hear it. Could you also do 112 by 2? You're right. You could have just divided by 2. Yeah, multiplying by half and dividing by 2 is the same thing. Here, let's go a level deeper. Are you ready? Like, not necessarily in the inception level, but let's go a level deeper. <laughs> why? Yeah, why? Can anyone explain why? Yeah, why? Why is multiplying by half and divided by two the same thing? Like, it works. I mean, that's a good explanation, but I need something deeper. 
Yeah, it was it. It's a keep changing flip it. Check it out, guys. If you've never thought about this before, it's kind of cool. We're really doing a keep it, change it, flip it. Keep it. Oh, I need to keep the whole number. Keep it. Change it. Flip it. Flip one half to two. That's exactly what Gunnar just said. 112 divided by two is the same thing as 112 times one half. Can I add on? No. Yeah, Jenny can add on to it. So that's her. Oh, dang it. How so do you keep taking people's cards? <laughs> Maybe. What? No, Sergio, don't give him your card. You clearly pass it down, or Jessica is in cahoots with Andres. Can I just add on to it, though? Yeah, go for it. So, one half and two, it's basically saying if you divide it by two and multiply by a half, it's basically just it's the it's half of what of that number. Like 56 <laughs> divided by 2 is half. So you're basically taking half of the number. I don't know if you're adding anything new to this discussion. Um, but but thank you for, for participating. Um, let's go on to number three. Or, or sorry, example number two, and then we're done. All right, so our red angle, angle A, B, C, A, D, C. This angle right here that is inscribed is 43. Label that angle 43. <laughs> the last answer was indeed 56 degrees. That's crazy. And my 43 does not look very neat and tight, so I'm going to write it again. 43 degrees. All right. I want to figure out what is the angle. What is the measure of angle ABC? ABC. Well, do I multiply by 2? Do I multiply by half? It's one or the other. Well, I'm I getting got there, it. so therefore I'm going I got it. Going, yes. I Multiply by two. So do it for us. Tell me what to write. I will be your scribe, Cohen. Tell me what to do. 43 degrees times two is equal to 86 degrees. Box it. Done. They're that easy. Yeah, Sergio, question. It is... It's going to be harder. These are. I'm giving you the basic skills, and then I'm going to build off those skills, branch out into some more beautiful areas of puzzle solving mathematics. I don't know if it's tomorrow. I should have boxed my answer up here. So let me come back and correct that. Thank you. All right, so before I end the lesson, give me a fist of five. How well can you use properties of inscribed angles to solve problems? I got a five, a four, a four, a zero, a four, a four, a three, a four, a four, a five, a four. A five. Oh, can you give me a zero? Okay. Actually, I'm doing you a favor because I collected.